Okay, hey, good morning. This is Kelly Laws, Kelly Girl, um, Kelly, 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 from the pit to the palace. So, um, okay, so hair. My hair does look a little healthier. Um, I did put the, um, the oil in it. I did try it, and um, I didn't go natural yet, but, but this is the thing. I am really, 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 and like I said yesterday, and I want to say it again, um, I, so, okay, so I, I was just reading what they were talking about on my job, sorry about that, so, um, I tried it, and the hair, okay, so the hair oil is kind of thick, and I'm used to a, you know, because my hair is, um, my hair is I'm not going to say fine, but it's kind of fine. And it's not like, um, my hair is not like real thick, 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 but my hair is more fine and, and it may look thick, but it really isn't. Um, it is, but it isn't. It, it, it's a different type of a thick. So I don't use like a lot of heavy oils in my hair because uh, I don't like the way it makes my hair look way down, but it's not a bad line. It did work. It did bring some life to my hair, you know, because my hair was like, oh my God, just over processed. And so um, I said I was going to, uh, I'm, I'm really considering, and, and I'm going to say it again, I'm really considering just doing a big chop, getting it over with and being done because I um, I kind of prefer, um, uh, I, I, like, I like my hair long. I really do. And um, I'm really, really, really thinking about just cutting it all off and just starting over and just let it grow out natural. Just, you know, like I say, get the... Um, the um the silk press and things like that but anyway i don't have my um i don't have my refresher this morning i got tea i got tea i gotta polish my nails too um but anyway um you know i i got up this morning and i just felt empowered by god this morning um and, and, and the Lord just really continued to keep putting in my spirit, you're supposed to be in New York. You're supposed to be in New York. So I am continuing to pray and, and decree and declare that I'm in New York, that I have an apartment um, that is, um, that is you know, within my, you know, that God blesses me with the funds to be able to sustain that apartment. You know, so because like I said, the job that I have, this outlier, I wouldn't recommend outlier because you know what? The things that I'm reading about them is, you know, there's a lot of people like they're, they just put me in another task, uh, which I have to now do 11 things to get $100. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, Lord. But anyway, I got an interview Friday. Thank you, Jesus. And it's working for Nori. It's a uh, STEM program. It's a summer camp. And I love, I love uh, STEM. You know, I'm, I'm a science girl. A lot of people don't know that, but I am a science girl. So it would be working with, um, it would be a director, you know, working with um, directing, you know, the teachers and things like that, which, you know, I do have experience with that, you know, being a teacher leader at, um, when I was in teaching in East Chicago, um, Indiana, you know, and the last school that I was at, I'll never forget, Ms. Mendez asked me, you know, when she came to my class and saw what I was doing, she was like, would you be willing to train other teachers? And I just looked at her, I said, train, well, I said, so I said, what are you saying on the low? And she was like, Ms. Laws, just would you be willing to train other teachers? And I just kind of looked at her like, y'all going to pay me? I'm just saying, you know, I know everything ain't about no money, but what y'all paying me right now ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why I had to move, because it just was not enough. It was not enough income. You know, once I left Tampa making that 60 some thousand dollars a year, it was like not enough income. You know, I went from 60 some to 40 some thousand, and you could imagine staying in Florida. And that's another reason God got me out. He was like, this is just not your, this is not your land. This is other people's land. And another thing that God revealed to me, too, was that Florida is a state for retirement. So Florida is not conducive to people coming to be successful. It, it's just you have to come with money to Florida. Um, New York is a different place. You know, you can come here and you can make wealth. In Florida, you come with wealth. So that's what, you know, God is, you know, people don't know that having conversations with God is one of the most powerful things in the world. And people just don't know 
the power and of the wisdom that God has because see God knows everything he created all people and he's and he sees all things he sees systems he sees the ups of man he sees the down of man and God is like all powerful and he knows everything he's all knowing all seeing all wisdom all present omnipresent he's present at all times you know there's nothing that escapes him you know, um, God sees the, the darkness, the deepest darkness of man, and the lightest light of men. And that's what's so powerful, because you can't hide nothing from him. Because light, when you cut a light on his light, everything is visible. You can't hide anything from God. God sees you. He sees your heart. And that's why, you know, it's important that if you do goof up, God sees your heart behind it. Not saying you may not suffer consequences behind it, but God sometimes doesn't allow you to suffer consequences because he sees your heart, and there's sometimes that you do. So, with that being said, but anyway, you know, I, um, yeah, um, but anyway, you know, moving forward, um, the hair stuff was fine, um, but yeah, I do have that interview on Friday, and I just, I, you know, I looked at that job, I was like, you know, you did keep some income coming in, but it wasn't like, you know, you would be in a task one day and it was like you had the right house. I mean, it was just so much stuff that you had to memorize and you had to know, you had to know how to write this. And if it didn't come out right, this thing was telling you it's wrong. You did a refusal, you know, and I can't really explain it because it's like you're writing for AI, you're training artificial intelligence, how to speak to, um, how to speak to people, but you have to have the right language and they want it to sound like it's conversational and not, um, like robot it doesn't sound like a robot it doesn't sound like a chat bot but it is a chat bot but it's real people behind chat box chat bots and i don't think people really know that they think it's just ai no we try actually write conversations for chat bot that's for ai that's what i that's what i do um if they had a better system and they had like a um you know like you it, 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 it's and it's hard to understand how you get paid to because you get paid weekly but it's like you may go in your queue and have like a million tasks. And this is what I found out too with them. I was writing the task so fast, responding, creating the questions so fast and the responses, they made my thing spin so that I couldn't go on to another one. And I and that kind of upset me a little bit. Y'all wait a minute. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, there was a lot of ants in, uh, on my windowsill, so I have to spray. Okay, so anyway. Um, but I was doing, I was writing so fast that they would just make my thing spin, which would kind of upset me because it was like, I couldn't get to the next task and do a whole bunch of tasks to get the wealth that I was used to having when I worked with DRC. So my prayer was like, Lord, you know, open up a door for me at DRC to do remote where I have more wealth or either open up the door for this director position, you know, and because I, you know, right now I'm in Irvington, I got to get back to New York. So it's like, God, I know by faith that you've gotten me back in New York. So we're going to. We're going to stand on the word of God. And um, I want to make sure one no ant spray on that because I think my cup is behind here. Yeah. My cup is behind here. Okay, y'all, sorry. I had to make sure one no, no um, spray on that because um, I told them when I, side note, I told them, I was like, you know, there's some ants that are coming in my house. And they had gone for a while, but I see now that they're trying to come back. I guess because they smell some of the food that's in here. So, but anyway, you know, so uh, Outlier, O-U-T-L-I-E-R. <coughs> if you happen to work for them, let it be because you got a, another gig and you got other income coming in. Because just to work for them um, is not is not conducive. I'm just going to be honest. It, it was, but on to my faith walk, on to my faith journey. So the interview is Friday. Um, yesterday I got on, um, I did a TikTok live yesterday and it was, it was, it was good. It was really good. You know, I was able to really just, um, be a blessing and I was being blessed as well. And, and it really, it, I, I knew I was in position and, and I, and I, you know, uh, but, but one of the things I found, I was like, God, people are so hungry for direction from, you know, people, one of the questions that I got a lot on that, that TikTok um, live was, how do you know the voice of God? And I know heaven was backing me. I know heaven was backing me 100% as I was doing that. One of the things that I told the people that was asking me that question is, I said, listen, 
you know, and God gave me this analogy. He gave me this parable. When children, children know their parents' voice because they spend time with their parents. And because they constantly hear their parents' voice, they know their parents' voice opposed to somebody else's voice. You understand? So, and I, the Lord gave me this analogy, and, and he had me speak this to them. He said, um, let's just say you were in a mall, and your kid got lost. And there's a, like 10 people calling your kid. But your kid is going to know your voice and not the voice of the strangers. Because anybody else that doesn't have your voice is considered a stranger. And that's what God was telling me. And, and so he was telling me to tell them, you get to know me by spending time with me, and then you'll know my voice. And the thing that I showed them was my Bible. I said, more than anything, I said, you know the voice of God by spending time with him in the word, worshiping him, talking to him, and let him talk back to you. The question was, well, how do you know it's God? I said, when you spend enough time with God, just like when children spend time with their parents, they know their parents' voice. You'll know God's voice when you speak to him. There's just certain things that, you know, um, you, you know, as you sharpen your skill to spend time with God and, and sharpen your skill to know him, you will be able to distinguish his voice from somebody else's voice. That's what the Lord was showing me and, and having me to tell them. Spend time with me in my word, you know, because, you know, all day long, we can listen to preachers all day long. But the, at the end of the day, it is what is your relationship with God? You know, because uh, a preacher can sometime or a prophet can come along and tell you anything. But what did God tell you? You know, what did God tell you? Um, specifically, what instructions did he give you? You know, so that's so important this hour because people are so hungry for direction and so hungry for to hear the word of God because of all of the things that are happening in this earth realm. People need to know the voice of God and not and to distinguish it from the voice of man. God uses people. He uses me. He uses others. But he also speaks to you directly. You know, we are here as part of the body of Christ to encourage one another daily and to be a blessing to one another. Because there are times where God is going to say, okay, they can't hear me right now. I want you to go and get him this word. <coughs> and I also want them to know that... Um, you all are all connected, you know, and so therefore I'm going to use somebody in this hour to remind you that you're not by yourself. However, if God never brought another person, you need to be able to know his voice for yourself. So that's what I talked about mainly on uh, TikTok yesterday. Um, so you know what? Something else, I, I just want to share this. You know, my faith walk, something that's really bothering me is this trial with Young Thug. You know, this, you know, I'm sitting up watching this judge. Um, with his corrupt self, sit up and want to throw a, throw a lawyer in jail because that lawyer refuses to disclose to him private information that would come against him and his client. That was, you know, I, I and this is the thing. I think people sometimes become so corrupt that they forget that they're being watched. You know, most of all, God is watching you. That's number one. Number two, Not only is God watching you, the world is watching you. Like, do you not know that people are watching you? Like, people are filming this and they taping this, and you all on TikTok with your corrupt self? That's what. That's exactly what I was thinking to myself. Like, how can you, you know, how can you be that corrupt where you don't even care who see you now? Because you're so used to getting away with it. And I declare that they're going to have a mistrial because... There, and then when I when they did the background, because, you know, they ended up interviewing this man on, I think it was Fox News, the judge. And the, the, they had did their research, and they found out that a lot of the people that are in jail, these men that are in jail, have, are being indicted but being held in jail sometimes 13, 14 years before they even have a trial. So this is what he's used to doing. He's used to holding people and letting things drag out for years um, on a taxpayer's dollar, because y'all know y'all paying for this. Um, and not giving these people a fair trial. Like, and, 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 and I just want to say this too, you know, for this black and white thing, you know, so a lot of times black people, you know, they get into it and they talk about, oh, well, you know, uh, the white man is the white man. And I think, let me tell y'all something, it really ain't got nothing to do with no color. I know racism exists. On, I, I'm not dumb and I'm not stupid. I've experienced it. However, I want you all to see too that corrupt ain't got no color. You understand what I'm saying? Corrupt ain't got no color. Corrupt can be black, white, Chinese, Hispanic, uh, whatever nationality. It can be any nationality. So stop. 
you know, with the with the comments about, you know, um, black people, this, no, stop doing that. I mean, because seriously, well, you know, we need to stick behind, no, you need to stick behind the truth. Stop sticking behind people, I don't care what color they are, if they're not operating in truth. You understand what I'm saying? You can't, you can't defend somebody because they black and you know they wrong, that's wrong, y'all. We can't defend people like that. Because if you knew the true history of slavery, let me tell y'all something, this is another part of my, I wanted to share this. When I was um, in college, my major was English, but I did a lot of, um, I might lift this up just a little bit more. I did a lot of, um, oh yeah, that's better. Uh, give me one second, y'all. Okay, there we go. So I studied a lot of African-American courses, okay? And uh, with me studying the African-American courses, um, I'd read a lot of slave narratives and history about, you know, what actually happened, you know, during slavery in history, okay? <clears throat> I also, when I was coming up, my aunt, Dolores, we got a teeny. My aunt had a three ebony black pictorials, and, and they were history books, and I, I know somebody got them now. You know, I, I'll tell you about how I know that later. But you can go on Amazon and order them. But they're called um, Ebony Black Pictorial. They're, hi they're history books. And, and um, yeah, my daughter says she remembers those. They tell the truth about history that most people don't want to talk about. One of the things that stood out, and I used to have this argument with a lot of people that were into the black, the blackness. This is, what I, this is what I told him, I said, you do know that black people sold other black people into slavery. The slave traders came over to Africa and they had black men, black chiefs and, 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 and black tribes sell these people that were slaves or servants to them and sell them. They caught some, but they sold some for guns, for liquor, and some of them um, these slave traders captured with the help of other black men. Just like it was, you know, like when you had, over here in America, you had um, black slave catchers, and a lot of people don't know about that either. That's another whole story uh, in itself. But it was very disturbing because, you know, we had always been taught that it was the, uh, you know, black people need to stick together and all this other kind of stuff. And I said, you know, I always had a problem with that. You know, uh, I, I had was really anti-white a long time ago because I was uh, I experienced some things when I had moved to Vegas my freshman year in high school they really kind of turned me against anybody that wasn't black you know they tried to call me a nigger and, and and go back to Africa where you belong and then that just really infuriated me and I you know um, was really anti-Caucasian and anything that was not black at that particular time and because I was hurt but Jesus healed me and that's another transparent moment but um, one of the things that I remember reading in that Emily Black Pictorial, and it was a history book, is, and it's a series of three volumes, and they're powerful, um, is that black people um, knew that in order for slavery to end, they had to have the cooperation of people, human beings that did not believe that slavery should exist and that no man should enslave another man, because that's not God's desire. Even though it happened in the Bible, even though it happened um, in history, it was just not God's desire. But the thing is, is that God doesn't a lot of time interfere with the things of men unless you invite him in to interfere with it. So people cried out to God and that's how slavery ended and was abolished in an act through uh, President Abraham Lincoln, which they assassinated him because he, he did not agree with it either. Or he was pressured into not agreeing in, 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 in agreeing with uh, slavery. But black people sold black people to slavery in Africa, and I think y'all need to know the truth. So what God had always, you know, God started dealing with me about um, about human. And he was like, Kelly, I don't look at the outward appearance of people. I look at people's hearts. And that's what God said he wanted me to start doing. Stop looking at the outward appearance of people and look at look at people's hearts. I don't know how I got on this, but I just really think that this was important because, you know, in my faith walk, you know, there's certain things that disturb me. And that young thug trial is disturbing me deeply. You got a black judge um, and it has nothing to do with his blackness. It's, it, you can be corrupt. I don't care what color you are. And, I, and God is really trying to show us this. And I don't know how many people are really paying attention. Stop being into the black and white thing and start looking at people's hearts. This man's heart ain't right towards this boy in his trial. 
this is not right. You're not you're not exemplifying what it means to be just. And if he doesn't repent, God, he's gonna have to answer the Lord for what he did. And all these men that he put in, because you know, and I saw all the men that are awaiting trial 13, 14 years in this in these jails in, in Fulton County, my mouth was my mouth my mouth just dropped. And I was like, What? He holding people indicting them and holding them and not giving them a fair trial that's crazy you know and i really just pray they expose that and they 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 uncover the truth and that they release these men and give these men a right to a fair trial either let them go in jesus name that's my prayer but i got on that because i don't you know i don't want to hear people talk about i mean i can't stop you but i just want your eyes to be open that is not always about a black and white thing it's about a human thing Black people can be corrupt, white people can be corrupt, Asian people, Hispanic people, all types of people can be corrupt. It ain't got nothing to do with color, and I want you to know that. And I'm going to tell you about a dream, because see, God deals with me in dreams, and I'm going to tell you about a dream that God gave me. So, um, when, when he was removing the thing about color, just like he did with Peter, when he told Peter, you know, I want you to go and lay hands on Cornelius and speak to Cornelius' family, he was like, God, that's he's unclean, I'm not going to his house. And the Lord put Peter in a deep sleep, unrolled all these um, animals that the Jewish people considered unclean and told him to eat. And Peter said, nope, I don't eat unclean animals. And God did it again. He said, I'm telling you to eat. So when he got up, the Holy Spirit revealed to Peter that I'm trying to show you that it has nothing to do with the nationality of a man, but it has everything to do with where, um, where a man's heart is. These men, this man needs to know and needs to hear the word of God so that his whole family will be saved. Because remember, I'm coming not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. That's why the Lord gave Peter that, because he was looking at race instead of looking and, and looking at religion, instead of looking at who God was sending him to. You know, God looks at the heart of man. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, the Lord gave me a dream similar to Peter. So um, God knows that um, I love the American doll. I, you, I remember when the American doll was implemented, when it was created. I was a teenager, okay, and I'm, I'll be 58 this year. So uh, in the dream, I was um, in the American doll store on, on Michigan Avenue in the water tower um, shopping mall. You know, if you've never been in Chicago, I used to live in Gary and I used to take the train to Chicago all the time. So I was in the uh, water tower. Um, I was in the American Doll store in Water Tower, okay? And I was gravitating towards this black doll. I wanted to get this, grab this black doll. But the Lord said, get a kit. She looks just like you. So the lady that was in the store who was the, um, um, she was the customer service rep, came over and was leading me towards the black doll. And I said, I don't want that one. I want this one right here. And the lady looked at me and she was like, well, no, you should get, I said, I don't want that one. I want kit. Kit had blonde hair and blue eyes. And the Lord, and I, so I grabbed this doll and I went to the uh, cash register and I bought her and I woke up. Now, God knows me. And remember I told you God created you and he knows who you are. God knew that I was going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. He knew that I was going to do my research on Kit. He knew I was going to order the book on Kit. And he knew I was going to read it and my life was never going to be the same after that. So I'm going to tell you what happened. I did my research and I found out who Kit was and I ordered the book. Kid had blonde hair, blue eyes, and, and was born due to depression, the Great Depression. So, got the book, and the Lord told me, and so I started reading the book on her, and um, the Lord said, she looks just like you. Now, you know, do it look like I got blonde hair, blue eyes? Y'all see my hair color? Y'all see my eyes? But the Lord was showing me, Kelly, she looks just like you. Stop looking at the outward appearance and look at the girl hard. She's just like you. So as I read the story about Kit, Kit was a journalist. I'm a writer. She would create these stories. I did too. And she would tell these stories to her friend. And she was like, she was, she considered herself like this little news reporter during the Great Depression. And um, her dad lost her job, lost his job. And they had to take in borders to help pay the rent, you know, to help keep the mortgage and to help keep their house. Um, Kit was very active in her household, helping her mom out a lot, always using her gifts and talents to be a blessing to her family, Kelly, okay? And so she uh, went to help her great uncle. I used to be really close to my great aunt. She went to help her great uncle and to kind of help him clean up around the house. And um, he was really mean. 
you know, but he, um, you know, was still, uh, he still paid her. This is my great, I'm, I'm, I, everybody's think my great aunt, sis, we called her sis, and her real name was Ruth. They thought she was mean. She was sometimes, but she wasn't mean to me. I ain't pay her no attention. I'm like, this is my great aunt, I love you. I, I And this real, I just got true. She was mean, but she wasn't mean to me, and I could care less because I was her favorite. <laughs> I know my family would holler, like, how are you out? You everybody's favorite. I am. I was my great auntie's uh, favorite, and I'm my uncle's favorite. I'll tell y'all about that on another video. So I was the favorite. She would come get me all the time, take me to Chicago, and I would stay with her on South Indiana. And that was at the time when Chicago was like, South Side Chicago was like booming, thriving, and alive. Just like the Harlem, Har during the Harlem Renaissance. It was alive and thriving. So um, as I continue to read about Kit, uh, the Great Depression hit her household like really, really tough. So Kit used her gifts and her talents to help get her family out of debt. It was amazing. And the Lord told me, see, that's how my, my business was birthed. It was called In Purpose, On Purpose Vision Coaching. The Lord told me, he said, Kelly, she's just like you. So this was the word inside of the book about Kit. And this was the word that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. In the book, the writer said Kit used um, used what she had to be a blessing to her family. The Lord spoke to me through that book and said, Kelly, just like Kit, use what you have to get out of debt. So, and I didn't follow through, that's my disobedience, but I birthed a, bit, a business called In Purpose, On Purpose Vision Coaching. And what I did was, is I coached people to purpose. I help you uh, take your vision and put it on paper, and then from paper, we could take you straight to purpose. But in order for something to be birthed, you gotta first of all, you gotta first of all, you gotta see it. You gotta know what it is. You gotta write it out, and then you gotta make the steps to get to it. So that's how I have the business in purpose on purpose vision coaching, and then I named it Kelly E Law's Consulting Firm, and it's up under that guise. So, um, and I'm thinking about just just really birthing that thing again, putting that thing back and resuscitating it, because I'm finding out being on TikTok is there's so many people. People have visions they just don't know how to even you know they don't know how to they don't know how to birth a thing and I know how to birth a thing you understand what I'm saying um, so anyway that was God's way of telling me you stop looking at the color of people and see people's hearts some of your friends are not gonna be black I'm just telling you that's what God is telling me now a lot of your friends ain't gonna be black they, they, they're gonna be human they're gonna be human beings and I want you to remember that it has nothing to do with a person's skin color. Because, see, we as black people have a tendency to look at people as black people. I want black people around me. Then white people say, I want white people around me. Then Hispanic people say, they want, I want Hispanic people around me. And then African people say, they want African people around them. And then so on and so forth. And God is like, it has nothing to do with that. If you stop looking at color and race and looking hearts, you'll see people differently. And you'll see people the way God sees people. And seeing people the way God sees people is a whole totally different world. And then you won't be so quick to judge people. You'll be with people that really genuinely care about you and who don't see the color of your skin. They see the human, the human mankind that God created you to be. And um, and remember this: in order for slavery to end, you needed people to stop slavery, not just black people. You understand what I'm saying? So that's my faith talk for today. That's my journey for today. Is um. Just making sure that you, um, well, you could have got a whole bunch of things from this conversation, but this is my faith wall. This is my faith wall. This is my journey from the pit to the palace. And um, I'm just telling y'all, if uh, I'm just prophetically, I am going to be in the palace, guys. Um, I didn't know I was going to come this way, but yeah. Anyway, I love y'all, and I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.